to Royal Wotan Bassett. Four Dickinson's Real Deal. All this week, the show will be celebrating Her Majesty the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. 60 fantastic years. <laughs> Today, we've come to Royal Wotton Bassett. Just look at the crowd, waving their flags. They really want to do business. I'm going to sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt them with a cash offer on the table today. Four fifty, five hundred pounds, Manda. No, I think you can go higher. I thought me and you had a rapport. Manda. I know, I know, but this is business. <laughs> If I don't think that offer is enough money, I'm going to say reject it. Gamble, go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. I will be on hand at all times to help and advise. The smiling faces are ready. They've brought along their treasures. You know why they're here. They want to walk away with the real deal. Coming up on today's Jubilee special, we find out about Wooten Bassett's royal connection. To be mayor of your hometown when it becomes a royal town is just quite unbelievable. We discover why collecting royal memorabilia can be so addictive. If you're a true collector and it's bitten you, it's like a disease and there is no known cure. The first deal of the day is with Simon Schneider. Will he fall hook, line and sinker for this opening item? Right, now, Leona, you've bought in this fish vase. Mm. What can you tell me about it? Um, my granddad's had it in his cupboard for a very long time. And he thought it would be interesting. And it is quite interesting. Do you know anything else about it, about who made it or anything like that? No. What about you, Rudy? Do you know much more about it? Well, I know it's the Claris Cliff. Um, I bought it with a, a collection. So was it a big collection or was it...? There's, there's about 30 pieces to the collection, but they're not all in that good condition. It's a little bit unusual, this. I mean, yeah. when people talk about Clarice Cliff, they sort of normally imagine the, the bizarre range, mm. and I think the sort of very highly coloured sort of deco plates with the balloons and the different Quite, colours yeah, on. Yeah. This is yeah. a wee bit later, isn't it? I, think I, I, I don't know. I think this is a little bit later on. If we turn it over, we can just make out that it's got a little... Can you see that impressed mark yeah. there, Leonie? And that says Clarice Cliff. And that is a name that immediately people will recognise, of course. So, do you like it, Leone? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to keep it? Mm -hmm. It's not really my kind of thought, but I like it. And what would you do with the money if you sold um, it? Um, me and my mama and sister and dad are planning to go to Florida, so use the money for Florida. Oh, well. <laughs> so, you're going to go to Florida on the, on the proceeds of Granddad's fish? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he probably come with us. Right, well, I'm, I shall try and contribute towards the cost of going to Florida. I'm not fast sure how far you'll get on what I'm offering, but I would pay you for your fish 20, 30 pounds. Mm. She doesn't look terribly impressed, does she? No, no. <laughs> what about you, Rudy? What's your gut reaction? Um, well, considering it's quite an interesting piece, as you've already said, um, I'd expect a bit more than that. A little bit more. What about if I went another five pounds and said 35 pounds? No. No? Not impressed? <laughs> well, let me try once more. Let me take that away and I'll put down another 20 and I'll say 40 pounds. What's your gut reaction, Leonie? What do you think um... you should do? Because I'm obviously quite young, I think it is quite a lot, so I would take it as a yes. <laughs> but as you said, you're quite young, and I think Rudy might have to decide to make sure that he thinks he can't get a bit more in auction. Mm. Would you like a day at the auctions? I'm quite happy with it, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to go to the auctions. Go on, let me tempt you a little bit more. I said it was my final offer, but go on, £45. Mm. That is my final offer. What's your decision, Rudy and Leonie? 
good auction. Auction it is then. I hope you do very well in auction and I hope you make lots of money towards your adventure in Florida. And thank you both very much for coming in today. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm really looking forward to the holiday, so let's hope we'll get more money. But have you and Grandad made the right decision, Leone? They're joining the Duke in the sale room where auctioneer Martin Lambert is angling to get them a better deal. We all know about Clarence Cliff. Everyone likes it. It's still very, very popular. 60 to 80 pounds is the estimation here in the sale room. Has Grandad made the right decision? Well, I think he has. Let's find out by looking over at the auctioneer now and see what happens. Uh, you tell me where you want to be. 80 pounds is it 80? 50 pounds then? I would have thought quite an unusual one. I have 30 here. Still no money. At 30 pounds then, your turn if you will. 35. 40 now if you will. At 35 pounds then. 35 pounds for the Clarence Cliff. 40. 45. Back in, sir. 50 pounds. Still a rare. rare. Come on. It's at the reserve. At 50 then. Bids on me left at 50 pounds. We're done. We're happy. All done at 50 pounds only. At 50 I sell. So the gamble's just gone down at 50 pounds. Well, that's good news in some ways but there is a commission to take off. It's just under £43. Now, you turned down £45 from Simon. You took the gamble. You thought it was worth the risk, and I think it was, but on the day, it didn't quite make it. Are you a bit disappointed? Not really, no, because um, we've had a chance to have a nice day out. OK. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. Coming to the sale room? You see, it's a good experience. You come to the sale room on Dickinson's Real Deal, you'll really enjoy it. You're going home with about 43 quid, and that is the real deal. You're right there, David. Sometimes the real deal can be about a great experience, not just the biggest profit. Back in the dealer's den, Karen Dolmeni's next item is not as it first appears. Right, what have we got here? We've got a walking stick by the looks. Nice malacca cane piece going down here, which is good news, because that's quality. Mm. Um, we've got, what do you think that is? Um, I'm not sure. Horn. Actually. Yeah, it's a horn handle. Um, we've got an inscription, so is that a family inscription? Do you know anything about no, it? No, it came through the family, so I don't really know much about it. Right, so let's have a look at this little beauty and see what it's all about. Right, it's not a sword stick, <laughs> it's a, actually a calibration stick for Horse measurement, isn't it? Yeah. How amazing. Look at that. And depending on the height, because they take this amount into account first of all, because it reaches a maximum there. Yeah. And there's this little bit here, isn't yeah. it, that comes up. Oh look, there's a little spirit level. And that would go that goes on the on horses. The Sits on the wither and wither. then yeah. that's it, you've got the terms. <laughs> <laughs> Sits on the horse's wither. Um, and so he knows he's got the right point. Yeah. How great. Yeah. So, why are you selling it? My daughter is competing in the para dressage. So we're taking her up there to Leicester to compete. So, yeah, yeah I want to get oh, enough money. really to proud of her. Yeah, then. she's dedicated. She really yeah. is. Yeah. Is that going to cost a lot of money to do yeah. all that? Is that? Yeah. I wonder how many of them there are. I sometimes do get asked for these, actually. Oh, I'm going to try and buy this off you because I think it's really interesting. Do sell it to me. Right. So, have you got an idea of value? Yeah. You have. <laughs> it's a big grin came on your face then. Um, right. One, two, three, four, five. There's 100. And this is pure guesswork, as per usual. Um, £140. I love it. Go £10 more. £10 more, I will <laughs> give you £10 more with pleasure because I absolutely love it. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for bringing it in. Thank you. And we've thank got you a deal very great. much. Thank you. <laughs> If I love it, I know one of my other dealers is going to love it. And this feature on the end, wow, when do you see that? I just think it's fantastic. Definitely a bit of profit in this. Karen's in the Jubilee spirit, isn't she? She paid well over the odds there. Let's hope that confidence pays off. Derek? We're off Hello. to see Helen Please Gardner now, and Derek's looking to swap his Royal Worcester for a regal sum. Now, you've brought in this iconic Worcester vase. So what can you tell me about this? Well, it's uh, left to me by my mother. Uh, she died a couple of years ago. 
I don't know where it came from, how she arrived at her house, but um, I believe it was about the beginning of the last century. Or... Was it in her china cabinet? Yes. Yeah, I would imagine that's, that's where, where they yeah. would keep it, because it's a, it's a, as I said, it's an iconic uh, late 19th century, maybe about 1900, yeah. uh, Worcester jug. Yeah. Uh, Worcester being one of the finest porcelain factories in England, so it's fine quality. Mm. Uh, it is getting to that period of Worcester is getting slightly in the bourgeois taste. It was it was made for show. Mm. They had amazing painters and decorators. This one is is beautiful condition. The painting on it is not by any of their top decorators that I can understand. Mm. But it is a, a saleable jug. People mm. collect Worcester. People like Worcester, as they should, because it's very very high quality porcelain. Um, you'll have an idea of how much you want for it, have you? I've got a vague idea. A vague idea. Well, I'll put some money on the table. I don't know if my offer will match up to your expectations. You see, won't we? I'll try you. There's twenty pounds, forty pounds, sixty pounds, eighty pounds. How's that sounding? Uh, a bit shy. What I was expecting. A bit, a bit shy. Yeah. A little bit shy or a big bit shy? Well... You're not saying, are no, you? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, £80. Pounds. Mm, no. Let me tempt you a little bit more, but it will only be a little bit more. £90. Pounds. What do you think of that? Uh, not quite there. Not quite there? No. But I might be quite there. Let me think, let me think. Can I find something smaller? I don't know. Ninety-five pounds. I think that's going to be my last offer on that. A little bit more, I expected. You may get more auction. I'm going to leave that decision entirely up to you. What do you want to do, Derek? Uh, considering that, I accept. You going to accept my money? I really thought you were going to go no. to auction. Well done. Thank you. I'm okay. absolutely delighted. Thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be able to sell it. Whether I make a profit, that's an entirely different issue. I think it's pretty near the bone, but it's very nice quality and I don't mind having it. How did Wooten Bassett get its royal seal of approval? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Wooten Bassett. The antiques and collectibles have been rolling in thick and fast. We're with Tim Hogarth, and Carol's hoping he'll prove to be a willing buyer for her gunpowder flasks. They've been sat in the garage for years, so I thought I'd bring them in to see if we can get some money for them. Let's see if the sparks fly. Two gunpowder flasks. Yeah. Now they can't be ours, Carol, can they? They were handed down to my husband from his gran. Because they're boys' toys, aren't yeah. they, really? <laughs> and I'm going to ask you, do you like them? Not really. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just have a look at them. This is the nicest one. And on here we have got um, a bit of carnage, really, haven't we, <laughs> when you look at it? We've got um, a dead hare, and we've got some pheasants, grouse, and then we've got the name James Dixon and Sons. Now, James Dixon is um, a factory in Sheffield. I'm not sure whether it's still going, but they do a lot of silver play and, and silverware and that. Very, very good name in, in, in the silver industry of plated wares. Um, but obviously, these are copper, they're not silver play, and they would have never been plated. I would say, looking at this, this looks a little bit earlier. This might be 1830, 1840. This one's a bit later, 1870, 1880. But this is the commercial one, really, because it's got this, I was going to say pretty scene. <laughs> it's it's not, quite decorative. Yeah, it is decorative, and it, it, it's uh, typical of its period, really, you know, typical Victorian. So, if I bought this today, what are you going to spend the money on? Well, I'm going to put it towards going on a holiday. Right. So it's a deposit for a holiday, yeah, yeah. right. 50 pounds. That's nice. It's lovely. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these. Well, you're tempted, aren't you? I can tell, I can tell. 
<laughs> like poker, this. It is a bit like poker. It is, but I'm not very good at poker. <laughs> <laughs> I gathered that, you know, kind of. <laughs> Just gathered that. Is that your last offer? Well, it will only be a little bit. Because you're not good let's, at this poker thing, see, are you? No. <laughs> let's see how much is a little bit. Well, I'm going to the bottom of that. <laughs> <laughs> £60. Pounds. Deal. Deal. We've let you were so much. easy to deal with. <laughs> All this week, we're celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. But only last year, the good folk of Wootton Bassett were bestowed a royal honour. In 2011, Wootton Bassett became the first town in more than a century to be given the title Royal, in recognition of the role it played during the repatriation of UK military personnel. The Duke is joined now by the Mayor of Royal Wooden Bassett, Paul Heafy, who has generously brought along his pride and joy, the town's royal charter. You must feel very privileged that during your term, Her Majesty the Queen graciously granted you this royal charter to be Royal Wooden Bassett. I mean, to be asked to become Mayor of your hometown is, is a bit special anyway. To, to be Mayor of your hometown when it becomes a royal town is just quite unbelievable. I mean, people at home watching the programme, I'm sure as soon as you mention the name of Royal Wooten Bassett, you think of the circumstances, the repatriation of our fallen heroes. Local townsfolk, they turned out in such huge numbers, and the conditions, sometimes very bad conditions, but they came time and time again. And they showed such dignity and such respect, not only to the families, but sadly, to our fallen heroes that were repatriated. Very, very moving, and I think that's something we will always remember about Royal Wharton Bassett. Now, this here is the town coat of arms. Yes. Now, am I right in thinking you need a registered coat of arms before Her Majesty can graciously grant you the charter? Yeah, correct. When we were, when we were informed that we were going to get, uh, become a royal town, we had to go through a procedure which was to register our coat of arms. And as you can see, our coat of arms has three lozenges yes. here. And this is actually the coat of arms for the House of Clarendon. Ah. So when we approached the College of Arms to register it, they informed us that we couldn't register it because it was already registered under a different uh, family. So we worked with the College of Arms, a Dr Clive Cheeseman, who helped us massively in uh, creating the new coat of arms which has a visible link to the royal family with the royal lion. I see. Now, once that was done, then Her Majesty could graciously grant you this royal charter. Yeah, correct. Uh, the Princess Royal, on the 16th of October 2011, came to Wooden Bassett. There was about 20,000 people in the town who Amazing. came out on, on the day. Amazing. The population of Wooden Bassett is just over 11 and a half, so we had, again, lots of support from, from the wider community. The sun shone, and it was an amazing day, and uh, we, we, we hopefully... Um, when people see the term Royal Wooden Bassett, they don't necessarily just think about us as a town, but they also think about those fallen servicemen and why we became royal. Uh, well, I, I think there's no question about that. I mean, this town will always live in the memory and the heart of the people in this country. For what it did, everyone knows what this town signifies. And just to visit, I think it will be an important part of a, a family's weekend or a day out to come and visit here. I'm going to suggest Come along to Royal Wharton Bassett, you will not be disappointed. Well, that's a prize to get excited about. But our next seller, Trevor, is just tickled pink to be here. Well, I come here today and it's exciting, you know what I mean? I see it on the telly all the time, we, we watch all the programmes, and I just thought it'd be nice to actually come and actually go through the whole thing and meet the, meet the stars like David. Don't be starstruck, Trevor. The Duke and auctioneer Martin are standing by because this next item is a tricky one. You brought me in, in this year of the dragon, you brought me in a very pretty little Chinese vase. Yeah. Did you buy it? Is it yours? Yes, yes, I've had it over 20 years. Really? Where did you buy it, Trevor? I bought it in a... I think it was like a little sale, boot sale thing in about 20 years ago. Oh, I see. 
So what made you buy it? Did you like it? It was the colours. It's uh, all the different colours and the dragon. The enamelling. Yeah, and it just felt really nice because you could feel the outside's got like you could feel where it's been yes. painted on. Well, I think it's a very pretty little Chinese vase. It's 19th century. Uh, I think the enamelling is particularly nice. And it's interesting, underneath, you've got the six character letters. Yeah. Now, this is, this is telling us this is from a much earlier reign, but they just kept copying them. So this would be a couple of hundred years earlier, the mark, yeah. uh, than what it, this, when the vase was made, because the vase is 19th century. Now, Martin, when this first came through the door, I thought, wow, I saw it being turned over, mm -hmm. I saw the character marks underneath, right. and from a distance I could see the mark of the Emperor Kang Shi, and I thought, oh, what have we got here? But on close inspection, it is not exactly what it seems to be, is it? I think you're quite correct. It's a nice thing, bottled bars, 18th century shape, Kangxi marks, as you know, 1662, 1722. Uh, but often the marks were in veneration of earlier rulers, and I think yes. that's what we've got here. So that's interesting. Just because you see early marks doesn't necessarily mean you have found a prize. On the other hand, it might be a right one. Absolutely. It's also difficult for auctioneers because you could legitimately be handling a vase that's 100, 200 years old, but the marks are saying it's 400 years old. Right. Lucky for you, Chinese porcelain is doing very well at the moment. The enamelling's nice. It's the year of the dragon. You've got two dragons chasing a flaming pearl. Yeah. And that's a very typical Chinese style of decoration. You have a few problems here. You've got a crack and a chip. So do you want a lot of money for your vase, Trevor? Oh. A few bob? A bit, if I can. <laughs> well, I'll put some money on the table and see where we go. I'm not sure if I'll be able to buy your vase, but I'll, I'll give it a go. There's 20 pounds. There's 40 pounds. 60 pounds, Trevor. How do you feel about that? You're not looking very happy about no, that. No. No. If I make it seventy pounds, are we getting closer, Trevor? No. Not really. Seventy pounds on the table. What do you think, Martin? It's probably not enough uh, at this market. Um, we're going out worldwide, globally on the internet. It's worth a bit more. Okay. You heard what Martin said, I agree. I think there's potentiality there. I think it's worth more money and I need to tell our seller. Oh, do you think I have to dig a little bit deeper? Yeah. Here's David, he's got to give you some Let advice. Let try and help. Well, you've heard what Helen says. You, you have early character marks there, yeah. which makes it interesting, but it's still 19th century. Nevertheless, it's an interesting vase and because of the Chinese marketplace at the moment, because of the interest, even in 19th century export wares, I'm going to say there's a reasonable chance at auction, but I'll tell you what they say. They say 100 to 150, 150 to 250. Unless you get more, I'm going to say that probably, because of the character marks, is worth a gamble. Yeah, thank well, you. Well, Trevor, you've heard David's advice. What do you think of David's advice? Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think. Do you want me to tempt you a little bit more? But it will be a little bit more. And then I'll put my final offer on the table and then I'll leave it with you. Uh, I'm going to put 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 pounds on the table. That's me finished. Yeah. So you can go to auction and maybe attract an internet buyer. But there's money on the table. So that's 90 pounds. What are you going to do, Trevor? I'll go to auction. Mm. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. And have yeah. a nice day out with David. Yeah. Well, are you going to tell me how much you paid for it? I, I paid a pound for it. £90 turned down. What do you think, Martin? Can we do better in your auction, even after that commission has been deducted? Well, no pressure there, then. Um, if it was mine, I'd send it to auction. OK. I think it's the right way to go. I think there's a reasonable chance of doing much better at auction. <laughs> I think it could make a bit more, and it's the year of the dragon, and why not? Somebody might want it, or some Chinese buyer might come in and say, I'll have it, pay a little bit more.
you just turned down an £89 profit, Trevor. We'll see whether your Chinese bars can fetch a better price under the auctioneer's gavel after the break. And we meet a royal enthusiast who's gone to extraordinary lengths to add to his collection. I suppose two or three times it nearly brought about a divorce. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Wooden Bassett. A few minutes ago, David advised Trevor to turn down Helen's offer of £90 for his Chinese vase. But will there be a willing buyer for it in the sale room? You turn down 90 quid. you decide, I'm going to gamble, I'm going <laughs> to go to auction, I'm going to see if we can get a little bit more money. The estimation starts at 100 to 250 and the reserve is 100 quid. Has Trevor done the right thing? Is it going to pay dividends? Or is he going to miss out? Here it is now. Which is the Chinese porcelain bottle bars in earlier style being shown to you now. Tell me where you see it. Where do you want to be? 150? 150 pounds for it? 100 pounds for it, surely? Well, I'll start with me 50. 50's bid, thank you. 5, 60, 5, 70, 5. That's 75 pounds that I have. Worth a bit more, I would have thought. At 75 pounds, ladies and gentlemen. 75 pounds all I made here today at 75. Looking around me at 75 then. All done at 75. Last chance at the money. Well, I'm afraid not quite. So, so one of the instructions there, so uh, casualty there, I'm afraid. <laughs> The has just gone down, Trevor, at £75. Didn't get to the reserve of £100. What's your feelings? I know it only costs a quid. Well, I had a day out and got to meet you, and uh, it's all it's interesting all stuff. Yeah. OK. Real deal, £90, Helen. OK, you were on the cash, girl. She was right. As the Duke continually and says, Trevor, the first profit is always the best. You only paid a pound. Turn down Helen's 90, but now go home empty-handed. Well, you still have a pretty vase, I suppose. All this week, we're celebrating the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. To commemorate this glorious event, we're popping to the home of a man who's been collecting royal keepsakes his whole life. My name is Stephen Jackson and I've collected royal commemorabilia for oh, over 60 years. My collection is all stored here, uh, mostly in the museum and in the garage, which when we built it we made a special allocation to put stuff. So it's kept here with me. The first time I started to collect, I was in Hastings and uh, with my grandfather and I saw a, a statue of Queen Victoria uh, in a, an antique shop which was selling for two and sixpence and I spent it on that and purchased it and he was very pleased and when I got home he showed me what quite a little collection he'd got which I subsequently inherited. I mainly acquired the items from junk shops, car boot sales and people who want to clear out or get rid of grandmother's junk and they hear about me or give me a ring, very rarely do I buy them from antique shops. My family, as far as the collection go, are not terribly interested. They're not anti, but uh, they've lived with it. Uh, and they're not... I don't think any of them will want to take it on when I've gone. But uh, you, you have to be particularly dedicated to keep it going. And so, uh, yeah, I, they tolerate it. That's about the best I can say. I suppose two or three times it nearly brought about a divorce. As if you're a true collector and it's bitten you, it's like a disease. And there is no known cure, unless you go bankrupt. Let's pop back to the dealer's den now and catch up with Simon. Hi, thank you very much for coming in today. It's Candice, isn't it? Hi, Candice, I'm Simon. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Candice, you've brought in these two rings today. Yes. Now, what can you tell me about those? Um, not a lot, really. Um, I inherited them from my great-grandma and I just thought I'd come along and see what I could get for them today, really. So what, you, what you've actually bought in here is a, a, a 22 karat gold wedding band. Yeah. And uh, this is slightly more modern, this one. I think that's probably about 100 years old, that ring, something yeah. like that. And this is a, a 9 karat gold ring with a small cameo in it, which the cameo probably started off life in Italy. Um, they were mass-produced, as you probably know from shells, yeah. and this one's been set in nine-carat gold and, and is probably like 40, 50 years old. Now, which one of those two do you think is probably the most valuable? The 22-carat gold. Absolutely. It's nearly four grams of 22-carat gold there, where there's just a couple of grams of nine-carat gold. 
So the price I'm going to offer you is based very much on the value of the gold that both rings contain. I would like to offer you, Candice, your two rings, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 pounds. Okay. Now that's pretty close to the scrap value of them. Okay. How do you feel about that? Tiny bit more? It would only be a tiny bit, because I think we're, we're roughly about £130 worth yeah. of scrap gold there. So if I was to be very, very generous and put down another £10, that would be very near the mark of what those two rings are worth. Would you like to hear what David thinks? Yes, please. Well, I'm looking at what is on the table. My job is to try and do the best I can for you. Now, there's about £137 worth of scrap there. £110 is on the table. I've tried so, to be very generous here. Because, well, I, you know. I have to say, I think it is, because all these dealers, they can value this to a few pounds. And they know if you go to the auction, there is the commission on both sides of the table. It's cash. There's no problem. You can take it home. If you go to the auction, I cannot genuinely say to you, I think we can do better for you. I'm yeah. not sure we can. Thanks, David. Candice, 110 pounds. I'll take it. Wise decision. Thank you very much for coming Thank in today. Thank you very much. And what will you do with the money, Candice? Um, probably interested? put it in my son's savings account. Oh well, that's a really good reason. Thank you very much for coming in today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy with how the deal went today. I'm happy that it's going back into my son's future. Coming up, Tim demonstrates his finest dealer skills. One flattery. Do you know you look too young? Oh. You, have a <laughs> you do. You're honestly. not going to be buttery up like that, Tim. <laughs> Two bribery. You should let me have this other 20 for a fish supper. <laughs> That's what you should do, Manda. But it looks like David's got his number. They can be careful with their money up there in Yorkshire. You know that, don't you? Get the other 20 in. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Royal Wooden Bassett. For our final item on today's Royal Special, let's pop back to Tim, where Mandy's hoping to get this deal all boxed up. Fabulous box. Now, I like a box. OK. Yeah, so I'm going to offer you a tenner for the box. Are you? <laughs> regardless of what's inside. All right, yes, you're welcome. Have we a got tenor. a deal, then, We've for got a, a tenor, deal for right. a tenner. I am now going to open the box. OK. Oh, hey, that's a bit posh, isn't it? It is. It is a beautiful piece. Very, very nice. Now, tell me a little bit about it. Well, it was a, an anniversary present from probably about 25 or 30 years ago. And, um, but I never wear it. An anniversary present? Yeah. A wedding anniversary present? It was, present. yes. Do you know you look too young oh. to have a <laughs> You do, You're honestly. You're not going to be buttery up like that, Tim. <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, trying, yeah. When it comes to the money, I yeah. mean, don't forget I owe you a tenner. You do. Yeah. I'll hold you to it. Right. So, let's have a look. Very pretty, that. Yeah. You don't need me to tell you who it's by, but obviously the people at home don't know who it's by. It's by a company called Jäger Lacoutre. Right. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Yeah, that sounds it. <laughs> um, which is a very, very good watchmaker, clockmakers, top drawer, um, and it's an 18 karat gold. And then round the bezel, we've got little diamonds and two cabochon cut rubies. Okay. So cabochon is the cut of the stone, which means that it's just flat as opposed to faceted. Right, thank you. So you didn't know that I knew all that, did you, Matt? No, no, well, <laughs> Are there you, you impressed? Go. I've learned lots, yes, yeah. thank you. Um, so if you were to sell this, what would you be spending the money on? Well, I'd, I'd love to take my children on a trip to New Zealand. Right, have it's you got they want family to do. there? We've got family over there, yes. So, are we ready? We're ready, yes. Right. 50. 100, 150, 200, 250, 300, 350, 400 pounds. Um, I think it's a good opening offer. Oh. Hello, David. I can see his eyes sparkling. <laughs> what you have got there is a wonderful 
quality watch. What, 18 karat gold, I it presume? Is David, yeah. Four to six hundred pounds is what they are saying. Right. The independent values. I'm going to say to you, I think they're being conservative. But it is a cocktail watch. And I have to defend Tim as well and say, cocktails aren't that easy. If it was an everyday ladies watch like a diamond Rolex, I'd say, oh, yes. So I think four to six is a realistic, quite low estimate. I think 400 is low. I'm going to leave you with Tim. His eyes are now... There's a little bit of watering in the corner of his That's eye. A tear, that, David. It was a tear. I think the tear was saying, damn. <laughs> but I'm going to leave him with you to see if he comes to the party more. But that isn't any ordinary watch. That is the Jäger La Coutre. <laughs> You look really happy. <laughs> oh, I'm cock a hope. <laughs> right, four hundred pounds is right because he always is right, isn't it? Right, four fifty, five hundred pounds, man. No, I think you can go higher. I thought me and you had a rapport. Man, I know, I know, but this is business. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're, we're not on this colour now. We're coordinating to another colour. OK. 520, 540. Now, bear in mind, you're a tenor to the front. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot about that. Oh, no, but that's for the box. That's a separate thing. That was a separate deal. <laughs> 560. Come on, man. No! <laughs> <laughs> Five eight. No. Oh. <laughs> they can be careful with their money up there in Yorkshire. You know that, don't you? Get the other twenty in. You should let me have this other twenty for a fish supper. <laughs> That's what you should do, Manda. You can't when you're on that plane to New Zealand. <laughs> you can't sit there with that pile of money and say that. Get away <laughs> yes, with I it. Can. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. You want six, don't you? You're not going to settle for less, are you? Right, £600, and I nearly forgot, Mandy, a tenner for the box. Thank I nearly you. kept that for my fish supper. <laughs> Have a lovely time in New Zealand. We will do. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks. Congratulations, Mandy. You certainly drove a hard bargain. Our Jubilee sellers have walked away with over £1,000 today. <laughs> As for our dealers, how are they fared with today's purchases? <laughs> I'll be able to sell it. Whether I make a profit, that's an entirely different issue. Helen was right. While she did manage to find a buyer for the pretty vase, it only put a few pounds in her purse. Simon sold the gold rings for scrap, doing very well for himself indeed. So they reckon I've paid a little bit over the odds? I don't think I've paid a little bit over the odds. And clever Karen obviously knew what she was doing as she managed to sell the walking stick for a tasty profit. Definitely a bit of profit in this. Meanwhile, while he sold the gunpowder flasks for £90... Thank you very much. Thank you. You can Thank come you. again. <laughs> Tim made a loss on Mandy's watch, selling it on for just £540. Oh! We've had a great day here in Royal Wooden Bassett. There's been bags of action, lots of buying and lots of selling. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.